I'm one of my clients bought this for me. Shall I keep it or what? What is it? I made coconut ice. I hate the stuff. Uh, on my diet? No, thank you. I'm going to throw it out. Yeah, well, all right. You sure? Well, go on. Throw it out. What are you knitting? Oh, I'm nothing. Just ditches. Occupational therapy. What time's Simon coming? No, he rang from the surgery. He's running late. I've got to meet him there. We're going to have Chinese, because he feels um, like having honey pearls. I'd rather go to the Roadhouse. They have a really plain. nice homemade steak and kidney pudding. One pearl. You won't get anything if you don't go. Oh. One pearl All right. Over. We'll keep up the knitting. You're looking thinner already. One plain. One pearl. <coughs> One. Oh, uh, one, one plane. Mm. Go on, Simon, tell us some more. Sorry, no. Well, you saw the body. I can't talk about it, I told you. All right. I'm sorry about Fatso, Simon. I'm not upset about Fatso bloody thing it was anyway. Chewing people's legs, making messes everywhere. You're just saying that. All right, everybody, dig in. Mm. Why aren't you eating? Not very hungry. You're not hungry. You're on a diet. Why'd I bother cooking? How's that feeling, Cheryl? Mm. You know, taught a couple of kids in the footy team to do this. It's an art. You've got to have a strong but gentle touch. Strong but gentle. Frank! Frank, wait! Wait! Oh! Oh, oh good day, Simon. Uh, no, she's not. I don't know when she'll be home. Surely, no? Oh, I thought I might try and interest her in some dinner out some... Indoor sports. Hmm? This patient looks in perfect health, Victoria. Well, thank you, Doctor, but flattery will get you nowhere. Assume me, of course, that I wanted to get somewhere, which I do. I take it this has got something to do with your good news. I'll be going to stay with Brendan for a few days while Molly's away. Oh, I hope you both be very happy. Ah, but you missed my point. I'll have a kitchen to create a nice little dinner for two. A veal scallopini a la masala, for instance. A nice bottle of wine. I'm sure Brendan will be impressed. But you didn't let me finish. Brendan will be on night shift tomorrow night, and there I'll be, out of town, far away from the madding crowd, my own room. Oh. Well, I just thought I'd let you know in case of emergencies. Very thoughtful of you, Doctor. I'll see if I can come up with one. Bye, Victoria. Bye, Simon. Ta-da! Veal scallopini a la masala, madame. Is that right? With the merest inflection of garlic, a whisper of brandy, and a piquant touch of candle grease. I do like to see what I'm eating. You would too if you live with my mother. Trust me. How can I trust a man who turns off the lights? Oh, it's not my doing. The generator isn't working. Then go out and fix it. Me fix it? These are surgeons' hands. Have some respect. All you have to do is kick it. The surgeon's feet? Mm. Your dinner? Oh, that's Henry. His wives beat him up. He's sleeping with me until his leg gets better. Oh, you're forming some very beautiful relationships. Very meaningful. Let's live for the moment, Vicky. Enjoy the wine, the roses, the candle, the pig. Shut up, Doris! Should have bought a torch. Guess I'm not nocturnal either. What? I just found Claire Willis wandering around in the bush. You know, Vera's niece. She said she wasn't nocturnal. I'm worried about her. She keeps blundering into things. 
And maybe she's at an awkward age. I don't know. She claims it's a touch of night blindness. But she just doesn't seem to be able to see things. Why don't you check her out? I can't very well shove her in front of an eye chart. Well, get her to read something out loud. If there's any trouble, I'll put pressure on her aunt to bring her in. Couldn't be serious, could it? Not at her age. If her eyesight is fading, it could be anything from a tumour to choroiditis. On the other hand, she could be right as a trivet and simply not looking where she's going. Did I tell you tonight, Victoria? Did I say how nice it is to have you all to myself? Mm, very nice. Do you like the music? Very apt. To your beautiful eyes. And now for something altogether different. Doris, say a few words for Brendan. Something <laughs> nice. Go on. Now, girls, say hello to Brendan. I want to hear all of you, including that hen at the back. Come on, all together. <laughs> Good country air, delicious food, excellent company, privacy. So why don't we do it again? Do what again? Listen to animal noises all night? I get enough of that round here, thanks very much. Now, are you going to leave me with my work or are you going to scrub up? Bye, Victoria. Bye, Simon. Well, I had a good time anyway. Yes, we're through with your Timmy now, Mrs Kemp. You can come and get him any time. Come in. Bye-bye. Oh, hello, Simon. Claire, someone I'd like you to meet, Dr Bowen. I've heard a lot about you from your Aunt Vera. How do you do? Fine, thanks. Pleased to meet you. Can I come in, Simon? If Dr Thompson's at Burrigan, he'll be at the Harper Street Clinic. Yeah, thanks, Jill. I know, you found me irresistible. Are you ringing Thompson about Claire? As a matter of fact, yes. Good, because I want to know what's wrong with her. She came back saying she doesn't need glasses and she doesn't need my help anymore, thanks very much, because she's changed her mind about going to uni. A woman's privilege? Don't give me that. She was dead set on doing zoology and movable. Well, what did Thompson tell her? She muttered something about written... written something. What is it? Is it serious? Oh, fair go. I'll need more than that to go on. <coughs> uh, Dr Bowen? Oh, yes, Doctor. I referred Miss Willis. Yeah, uh, you'll have to bear with me. Retinitis pigmentosa. Yes, hereditary. Look, I'd like to know a little more before I talk to Claire. What did you tell her? You told her what? I thought cats clean themselves. You wash them when more chlorinated hydrocarbon drifts down on them. Otherwise, they lick it off. Doesn't do them much good. When's Susan coming out of hospital? End of the week. Can you tell her that I'll keep him till then? Claire can take over from tomorrow. She's coming back. Just until school goes back. Simon Bowen, the man with a keen investigative brain, almost legendary powers, has just saved the maiden from the dragon. So why don't I take you out to dinner and tell you all about it? Claire will tell me how wonderful you are. She's going on with zoology, too. Mm. She's still going to face discrimination from bureaucrats and employers looking for physical perfection. But she knows all that, and she still wants to give it a go. Good honour. All my doing, he said modestly. And well worth a kiss, don't you think? Oh, certainly. Here, Pookie, give him a kiss. <sighs> Come in, bring your animal. Well, where have you got them? Blue Ashdown finally doing something for the district. You've got an air conditioner in that room, haven't you, Bev? Oh, you approve of this. Why not? Good for the town. Bev, I'd get them out of there straight away. The poor little things are just cold. What, you want to smelt them in Wandon Valley? Bev, would you like a word with Dr Bowen? Sorry, he's just walked out. Bye, Bev. Well, Doctor, what can I do for you? Don't answer that. You've been running. You're sweating. Women sweat, doctors perspire. Horses glow, yes, I've heard. Just a headache. 
Whatever it is, I don't want it. I've got a lot of spaying to do. You shivering? Uh, uh, it's just a coal coming on. If you're a horse, I'd get you under a blanket. Mm. <laughs> you okay in there, mate? Yeah, I'm okay. There you are. Open. Yeah, coplic spots. I've never caught measles. Well, you've caught them now. Measles. You need care and you can't get that at the hotel. Oh, hello, Marta. I've got a patient for you. Dr. Bowen has a classic case of measles. Hello. Hello. I'm uh, Adrian Short. I recognise the tan and the bull terrier. I'm Vicky Dean. Oh, it suits you, Vicky. Hello, fella. You're sick. Put him on the table, please. Okay. Come on. Oh, sorry, old boy. What's wrong with him? Prostate. Males get that. Abdomen's tense. Is he retaining urine? You must know. Yes, yes, he is. And you took him to a vet in the city? Yes, he wanted to, uh... Castrate him. And you didn't want your little male friend. Well, I don't see why he should be cut off in his prime. So you tried oestrogen? Yes, uh, I forgot the tablets. I doubled up on them. Mm-hmm. What you've got here is an enlarged prostate, blocked bladder. The dog will strain, could get hernia, paralysis of the back legs. So what do we do? I'll have to take the prostate out. No one will know. <laughs> you mean you don't actually remove the, um... Boy, you are some hard-hitting reporter. Well, I'm really very sensitive. And easily hurt. I'll explain it over dinner. <laughs> I've got to go and visit a friend in hospital. Girlfriend? Male friend. Prostate? Measles. I assumed I'd had it. Every kid I knew had had measles. And I didn't get them at school. And you sit in your surgery telling every mother that their child must have measles vaccination between 12 and 15 months. Oh. Yeah, I'm very good at that speech, actually. And you know as well as I do, they didn't have the vaccination when I was a child. The hotel's not set up to deal with you, Simon. Oh, he wants to go to the pub, does he? He can be fed, washed. I'm not having him wash me. All right, Nurse Hammond then, but she's not as gentle as I am. How about Vicky? That's interesting. When doctors are sick, they go to the vet, do they? Oh, yeah. Well, you see, we know what doctors are like. Oh, I see. So next time I'm sick... She'll put you down. Bah. He's getting your sense of humour back. I wasn't joking. Two days. You'll be over the worst of it. I promise. Now, just stick this under your tongue for me, dear. I was always under the impression that you were given everything as a child. Private schools. M.G., Silver Spoon, Measles. Everyone's a comedian. I won't kiss you if you don't mind. Once the rash is up, I'm not as infectious. Adrian Short's got a better line than that. Well, where'd you meet him? He brought his dog in for me to look at. Is that all he wanted you to look at, was it? Oh, there was a couple of metres of manly chest. He's taking me to the club tonight. What? I mean, you know his reputation, don't you? No, is it as bad as yours, Simon? I mean, you can't pick up a copy of TV Week without reading about the secret love of Adrian Short. Makes you wonder whether he isn't gay. Maybe all he needs is the help of an understanding woman. Oh, you're not going to fall for that old line. Look, Simon, I can protect myself when it comes to people like Adrian Short. <sighs> How do sick people breathe? Save me from having doctors as patients. At least I had classic symptoms. Then why didn't you recognize them? I've never seen them from the inside before. <laughs> oh, Marta, I'm not a well person. After eight hours of trying to go home, you finally recognize that. Will you tell Vicky I'm not as infectious as she thinks? I shall do nothing of the kind. Sleep tight. Tight is correct. Marta, this couldn't have happened at a worse time. That Adrian Short is trying to get on to Vicky. Who? That reporter with Bluey Ashdown. Vicky's a country girl. She's charming and lovely, but unsophisticated. You know, she might have trouble holding off a city bloke who thinks that country girls are just waiting for them to come along and sweep them off their feet. 
Don't worry, Simon. Vicky's coped so far. You know, I've been thinking about Logie. You're right. I wonder if you'd have another look at him. Bring him in in the morning. Well, I was thinking about tonight. He's in my room. Don't you have any itchings? I'm only in town for a couple of days. Well, you better make the most of it. Come on, now, where are you going? To the hospital. Come on, sweetheart, let him get a good night's rest. You don't have to rush off so soon. Unless you're frightened, of course. Frightened? Yes. Come on, sit down. Nobody's going to hurt you. Nobody ever has. And you know why? I think it's got something to do with working with animals. You can smell a phony a mile off. Hi. Do you, uh, do you mind if I join you? No, please do. My name's uh, Adrian Short. Oh, You've uh, probably seen my television show, haven't you? Yeah. Okay, city boy, are you awake? I mean, I mean, I know what it is, but is it serious? Down. Doing a lumber pack to Vicky, that'll tell us. Still the she, still the she. Red Terrence. She's got to measure the pressure of the CSF, that's a cerebrospinal fluid. Also take a couple of drops for analysis. No, she does. We'll need to take a blood test too. She uh, Can you hold him, Mother? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a plane from Barragan at 7.30 tomorrow morning. Right. I'll deliver these out to the airport tonight. Make sure I don't miss it. Can't the test be done at Barragan? No. Westmead's the closest. Thank you. And the best. I want those results quickly. But it is encephalitis, isn't it? Looks that way, Vicky. It has all the symptoms and it can be a complication of measles. Wasn't there an epidemic of encephalitis in the Murray Valley a few years ago? Oh, well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. Yes, there was. It's a long way from here. Some cattle at the sale yards are from down there. The disease is carried by mosquitoes. It's the right time of year for it. Do you think the mosquitoes could have come up with the stock? You're the vet. Ticks and flies come with them. Why not mozzies? Or will the sample show the type? An antibody teeter will. If it is, all the cattle around here could be affected. If it is encephalitis, how bad, Simon? We've got him early, Vicky. But it can be fatal, can't it? Yes, sometimes. But he's young and he's fit. You just have to watch him closely. Will you ring Westmead tomorrow and tell them it's on its way? Yeah. He'll need half hourly monitoring all night. Mm -hmm. Intravenous therapy? Oh, yeah. And if he doesn't pick up, we'll try steroids. Antibiotics won't be any use. Mm. Look, make sure the night staff know precisely what they're doing. Yeah. Sorry. Well... I'll ring you in the night if there's any problem. Yeah. Right. Um, you got your car, Vicky? You need a lift? No, no, thanks, Terence. I'll be right. I might just hang around for a while. Fixed drums. <laughs> no brakes. She will. They think I'm no good. They think I'm no good. I go to the city. Go to the city. Terence knows. Terence knows she's taking down the city. Go to the city and go. She knows. Go to the city. I'm good. Yes, yeah, Simon, you're good. Everyone knows you if are. I was taking down the Vic, Vicky's animal, animals, good cats, and, and dogs feel, fearing of the cat. She doesn't care. Here, I do care. Vicky. Whenever I'm feeling low, there you are, cracking your damn take, funnies. Taking it down. Simon, um, please get well. Get well. She doesn't. Please get well, city boy. She does fear Earl's down. Oh, my fear. wouldn't go home. Vicky. Vicky. Oh, I feel asleep. You should be home in bed. 
How is he? Simon. Simon. Is he conscious? Yes, but he's not. No, he's not. He's convulsing. He'll have to be kept under constant observation. I can do it. I'll stay. I'll just get a cup of coffee first. Wake up. As far as I know, there is no epidemic, Beverly. People are not dropping like flies or mosquitoes. Goodbye, Bev. Good old Beverly, the voice of doom. Oh, Simon's father. When you call him again, he'll be on that number. Mrs. Hoskins, Mr. Pearson, Mrs. Jenkins, Mrs. What are all these? Oh, oh they're for Simon. Patients inquiring about him. I didn't want to bother them at the hospital. <laughs> You'll never believe it. How'd you go? Oh, three more cases of measles at Gully Road. Two in the Lee household, which is to be expected. Any other symptoms? No. I told them about Simon, how he wouldn't have gotten measles if the vaccine had been available when he was a child. Waste of time, I'm afraid. Well, you can't force them to have the children vaccinated. Simon probably would. Oh, by the way, Vicky rang, and his condition is still stable. Is she still there? No, she had to open the clinic at 10 o'clock. I hope Simon appreciates her concern. She was there all night. I don't think she'd want him to know that. Uh -huh. Don't ask me why. My daughter doesn't like to wear her heart on her sleeve. I think she's frightened somebody might do it some damage. <laughs> I suppose her father and I are to blame for that. She could have a point there. If you don't put yourself in a vulnerable position, you don't get hurt. You don't get much love either. Hello, just come in, thanks. Hi there. Uh, about what happened last night. Nothing happened last night. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm still trying to figure out why. Obviously, I upset you. I'm sorry. You did not upset me. You bored me. Honestly, your line's so old, Adrian. Well, maybe. Works most of the time. Look, I'm busy and I'm tired. But you left the club early enough. I went to the hospital. Ah, oh, yes. The ailing doctor. That's another good line. Did he start the epidemic or is he just part of it? Who told you there was an epidemic? Gathering information is my profession. There is no epidemic. Okay, well, I didn't just come here to apologize or gather information. I'm here on serious business. He's a lot worse. He had a very bad night last night. Can only get worse. Well, then I suppose you better do what you have to do. I'll castrate him this afternoon. It's a simple operation. Simple? What are you taking his doghood? You can come pick him up tomorrow morning. He knows, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, old son. Are you going to stay or are you going to go? I could do two for the price of one. You would be lynched by hordes of satisfied women. Hi, how is he? Oh, he's improved a little, Vicky. We won't know for another 24 hours, but he's stable. No more convulsions? No. What's Terence say? Has he got the results of the test pack? It's encephalitis, but he doesn't think it's Murray Valley encephalitis. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, I might come back later. I'm doing my rounds. Shirley? Yes, darling? I seem to remember Vicky here with me. Oh. Was she sure? Sitting here holding my hand? Oh, darling, I don't know that. You'll have to ask her. I'm sure she'll be to see you later. Probably just um, dreaming, huh? <laughs> we do nothing but eat lately. I know. I hate French cakes. So do I. Nothing but negative self-indulgence. Speak for yourself. I love French cakes. Mm. You're only eating because you don't like Frank having a new lady. I don't care about Frank's new lady. You should. She's lost a lot of weight. Single, too. Won't stay single for long. Merry widow. Great cook. So what? You should be worried. She's doing me a favor. What about you? Mooning around over that swollen headed upstart. Your words. Poor vulnerable Simon in his hospital bed. <laughs> and you fall to pieces. That's nothing. I fall to pieces over a sick cat. 
It's my maternal instinct, my loving nature. <laughs> oh, he's not going to stay in Wandon Valley, he used to say. Why should I waste myself on him, remember? What about you? Always going on about what a bore Frank is. And then the minute that Laurel moves in, you turn to French cakes. You should talk. Why don't we come to terms with our frustration and misery? Have you tried the apple ones? They're scrummy. Mm. I think I can say with certainty, Vicky, that he is improving. Am I right? Pulse rate 90. Temperature down to 37.6. Not enough, but some improvement. You do look better. I've still got this ferocious headache. I think I ought to have an antipyretic. You've had one, rectally. I don't think they give me enough fluids, Terence. Well, you can have some orange juice, but you can drink plenty of water. Oh, uh, yes, thanks, Vicky. No, no, not that glass, the other one. What about food? Do you think you could eat something? No, I'm not ready for it. Are they the flowers Mum gave you? Mm, they're nice, but I prefer yellow ones. We've got you on fentoin sodium. That should prevent any more convulsions. I know, Marta told me. Listen, about the dosage. Now, don't you think it should no. be... Now, what about some food? Well, I could get something from the kitchen. What would you like? Oh, I don't know. A light soup, maybe. Well, they might have some vegetable broth. The four-hourly medication, Terence. It's never on time. They're always late with it. I've told Marta about it. Yeah, all right. I could eat a little soup. A little thin, very thin, vichy soir. Now, a half a slice of toast, that's brown bread, not white. Well, I don't think Cook has vichy soirs, but I'll see what I can do. And they're not checking my temperature enough, Terence. I had to remind them twice. Well, I'll have to talk to them, Simon. Looks more intelligent when you can't hear him. Oh, he's not a bad bloke, really. Bought a bottle of champagne for his date with Doris. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do when he discovered Doris was a pig? I took it really well. Kicked the gate in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, turn it up, Brendan. Blue Ashdown's on. Hi. Well, good day. I didn't expect to see you here. What a welcome. <laughs> I thought you'd be down at the club giving him a hard time. Oh, I couldn't be bothered. It's bad enough having to look at him on television. As you know, I've been spending some time with uh, people in the valley, meeting some old friends, making some new ones. Been enemies too, but <laughs> a man without enemies is a man without convictions, they say. Well, people in Wandon Valley don't want the Midwest con smelter here, and, and I don't want it here. Opinions against it? A survey done by my government's committees against it, and, and I'm against it. You've won! Molly, you've won! I've advised my leader of this, and I can announce that after a telephone conversation with him only moments ago, I, I took the strongest possible stand on it. <coughs> the strongest possible stand. We've all got to stick behind our uh, beliefs and principles, whatever the cost. Bloody hypocrite. This is a beautiful valley. It must be preserved for those who care. I don't believe it. Somebody's pulled the rug from under him. You could see it in his face. They've pulled out. They're moving somewhere else. It must be preserved for those who care. Do you hear that, Mole? He's right. It is a beautiful place. Well, let's not ever forget that, eh? Gave half of them to the lady next door. You've got too many things anyway. Mmm, this tastes good. You bring it in, Vicky? No, why? Well, it tastes too good for hospital food. I thought uh, you might have made it for me. Why should I? There's perfectly decent food here. Yeah, and nurses too. But that didn't stop you from staying here with me when I was really sick. Well, I visited you. No, you sat by my bed and you were talking to me. You were always there, weren't you? You were delirious. You didn't know what was going on. No, every time I woke up, you were there. Well, that's how it seemed to me. Wishful thinking, Simon. No. No, there was one night, and I didn't know where I was, but you always seemed to be close by. And you were talking, that's right. Uh, you were saying... and you were holding my hand. And once... once I heard you crying, and I remember thinking in my sleep, 
I've been wrong about you. Nice to know you were dreaming about me. You're welcome. But you were there. I'm sure you were, day and night. And if you weren't, you should have been. Oh, really? What about my work? Well, what about me? I mean, I'm lying here dying, and my best friend is carrying on as though nothing had happened. Gallivanting. I don't gallivant. And if I did, what business is it of yours? You don't owe me, Simon. And if you want to know, I went out one night. I went to the club with Adrian Short. That undersized little creep. I mean, just because he's on television, how parochial. He's not undersized. His head could fit under your armpit. He's short. He's got duck's disease. But I wouldn't say he was undersized. Come on, Simon, eat up. You want to get big and strong, don't you? I am big and strong. What are you doing? Cooking Simon a meal. He hates hospital food. He's a gourmet cook. He's very weak and vulnerable. What's that mean? What? That. Did I do that? He's still very sick. No, sick Simon's quite appealing. It sure is. He is. He's subdued and humble and nice. Sure. Speaking of subdued and humble, I saw Frank and Laurel at the movies. Oh, did you? Last night. Well, I'm delighted for Frank. Why? And for myself. Oh, I've been trying to upload him for months. Now he's finally gone. Life couldn't be better. It's chicken al -Adin. See if you like it. Thanks. It's delicious. I'm not sure I can eat it, though. Why? It's light. It's not greasy. Easy to digest. I know. But my whole metabolism is up the creek. The other day I had a lettuce leaf and I had all types of allergic reactions to it. My whole system is oversensitized. Everything is a minor trauma to my body. It must be terrible. I feel so emotional. This morning I saw a butterfly trapped between the window and the fly wire up there. And I nearly cried. I can imagine. Such a beautiful, proud thing, beating itself to death against the window. Don't think about it. Try some apple pie. It's still warm. Little things like that can tear me apart. You've got to eat. I feel so weak, so vulnerable. I made it myself. I feel like that butterfly. Come on. I can feed myself. Good. One more. It's delicious. Pity I'm not hungry. How could you be hungry after eating three sausage rolls and a bag of chips? Sorry? Give me patience. What's wrong with Sue? She was being nice to me today. Poor Simon. You needn't worry about Fatso. He's being well looked after. He's in good hands. Oh, I'm not worried. I know. The problem is, will he want to come back to me after being loved and spoiled by you? He misses you a lot. He's probably forgotten me. Everybody has. It doesn't take long, and I'm just getting a foothold in the community. Please, don't start that again. Getting my own patience. It's not easy in a small town. Not easy getting them to trust you. And now this. Simon, they love you. Look at all this. Please don't start feeling sorry for yourself. I set back in my career. There I was in the city. High-passing marks, a great future in front of me, and no jobs. And then the country, and now a serious illness. When will I ever get the chance? I mean, the chance I badly need to prove myself. That's enough. It's all right. I'm not going to cut my wrists. I've been sitting here doing a lot of thinking. I know when I'm beaten. There's no drama, no feeling sorry for myself. I accept it. I guess I'm basically a stoic and a bit of a Spartan comes from my grandfather, I suppose. You're not a stoic, and you're not a Spartan. You're a bloody great whinger and a great big pain in the, in the bum. I'll never understand women. All we ever seem to do lately is eat. There's nothing else in our lives. You mean we eat instead of... That's right. No, that can't be right. When you're having a love affair, you eat out all the time. You eat when you do, you eat when you don't. It all boils down to food. I guess you're right. <laughs> That's so. We thought you might be missing each other. G'day, mate. How are you? And I bought you another corn casserole. Another? Yeah, for when you get out, Brendan says you're hoarding them. Ah, uh, right. Well, pop it over there. 
Unless Fetzo's interested. Oh, you don't want to spoil him. Well, he needs some compensation. How's life on the inside? Well, I can't really comment in front of the nurse's wife. Oh, look, where is he? I, I need to see him. Yeah, well, he's never around when I need him either. Dear old Fatso. And is she feeding you all those roots and leaves? He's eating to compensate. A bit like his keepers. Well, I'll be out of here soon. It's Mum who's doing the real binge. I didn't know she cared. Frank Gilroy's leaving town. Frank? Never. Mm -hmm. He's setting up a flat in Sydney, he told me. Only for visits, he says. But that Laurel woman's got him on a street. Yeah, well, I reckon Frank and Fatso have got a lot in common. And you wouldn't hold Fatso down with any piece of string. <laughs> Uh, well, quick, uh, under the bed. I'll be a diversion. Yep. Ready? <laughs> Come in. Hello, darling. What are you doing here? Uh, I came looking for you. Well, that's fair enough. I'm in and out of this room often enough. Um, Brendan, will you stand in for me? He, uh, he needs a, a second. Uh, not him, no, Benny, Benny the boxer. No. Benny the septic tanker? Yes, he needs someone in his corner, he says, and that's me because I sewed his shorts and lent him that ratty And who's going to fix the uh, septic tank during all this? Uh, listen, Brendan, uh, do what she says. What's going on? Nothing. Nothing. That fight needs medical supervision, mate. I'm counting on you, Brendan. There's a funny smell in this room. Look, hurry, darling, it's nearly lunchtime already. Well, if Frank can't see where it's leading, he deserves to get eaten up. You're just going to sit by and let it happen. She's leading him on. He's falling over his feet to follow. <laughs> Why should I care about a man like that? The point is, you do. Why don't you step in and tell him exactly what she's all about? You think I was just being bitchy? Not coming from you. Simon agrees with me. Simon? Mm, this morning we had a long talk. How dare you gossip with my boss? There was no one else around. But in return, I heard some interesting stuff about Terence and his ex-wife. Oh. Hmm. It seems that she's no better than Laurel. Out to trap him any way she can. Trap him might apply to Laurel, but you can't say that about Mrs. Elliot. No difference at all. For all you know, Terence Elliot might be just as keen as she is. On reconciliation. <laughs>